Okay, I have finished and posted my sketch. Now I want to open that sketch in Photo P, and I want to choose if I did multiple sketches, like I did a horizontal and a vertical one. And I've chosen the vertical one to focus on. So now, for the first time, I'm going to use the crop tool in Photo P. I'm going to enlarge the tools a little bit so you can see them. So the crop tool is underneath what we've mostly used as the magic wand. And I'm going to crop just a little bit outside of my format sketch for my landscape. Notice that when I sketch for the class, I don't fill up a frame. So if I were using a sketchbook, I wouldn't take a sketchbook page and just fill it up. I would always draw a formatting box first. And that has a lot of advantages. So these are what are called formatting boxes. And now I'm cropping down to the one I want to use specifically. Now this is something I drew digitally, so it already has a pixel resolution. It was drawn with a certain number of pixels. But that pixel resolution is not adequate for what I want my finished project to be. And it is a lot smaller than the reference images that I've been using. So, I'll drag this a little smaller. So what I need to do is to make, before I start bringing in other people's pixels, right? I need to scale this, make this large enough so that they'll come in and not have to be reduced. Because right now, if I bring them in, their actual size is much, much bigger than the space I have. So how do I do that? Well, for one, I can click on View and click on Rulers. And the shortcut for that is Action Key plus R. So you can toggle your rulers on and off with that. And unfortunately, the, the rulers in Photo P I think are always set to pixel dimensions rather than inches. Whereas in Photoshop, you can change that in preferences where you can see the rulers as inches, which is helpful. But you can always see your inches and in your res resolution by going to image, image size. So right now I have an image that's 72 pixels per inch, standard screen resolution, but it's only 300 by 500. And what I actually want in pixels. I want to change it to inches because I'm thinking of it as a printout. And I want it to be at least 8 by 10 inches. So I'm going to put in 8 here. And then because I have the padlock set or the chain link set, which you want, it's going to automatically fill in the height. So if it's 8 inches wide, which is the minimum I want you to have, it's going to be whatever height it is. If it was a square, it would be 8 by 8. And then we're going to check resample because we want to grow our number of pixels. Even though it's going to soften our sketch, it's going to give us the right environment to bring in our high resolution references. So for the, the pixels, I'm going to do 150 pixels per inch. Remember it says DPI for dots per inch, but that's a mistake in Photopea. It should say PPI, pixels per inch. So when I say OK, it's really growing my image. So what were pretty sharp pixels making my lines are now really, really blurred out because the computer invented a ton of pixels. But the good news is that now I have an image that is 8 by 12 inches at 150 pixels per inch, which is a really good screen resolution. So if I view it under View, and show, oh no, let's see, what do I want to do? If I view it and say pixel to pixel, so this shows me how using the screen resolution of my computer, of my monitor, it's showing me how large the image would be on screen. And you see how it's larger than the screen. If it was horizontal, it would just about fill the whole screen. 
if I was going to make this for print resolution, I wouldn't use 150, which is a high def screen resolution. I would use instead my standard lab resolution, which is 350. And notice I'm always going a little bit beyond the standard minimums. So the standard minimums for print and screen, just made a screen grab of it, are these. So if you're printing it with a printer, making a physical object, you want it to be at least 300 pixels per inch. And the standard minimum for, for ooh, I need to change that, for screen resolution, it's a very confusing image otherwise. This will help you pay attention to it. The standard minimum for screen resolution Almost fits is 72 pixels per inch. So we're doing 150, basically double the standard minimum for screen resolution because screens have gotten a lot better. Okay. Professor, how, do, how were you able to uh, crop out that and uh, keep the, the interior of your rectangle select? Let's see. Let me go back before I cropped so I can show you. So I, I drew uh, little format boxes right within my paper. So if this was my sketchbook. This whole white thing would be my sketchbook page, and I drew these boxes. And so cropping, I just drag a rectangle a little bit outside of it and then hit return. And then I go to image, image size, and I'm going to change it to eight inches and then change, make sure resample is checked, the padlock is on, and change the pixel per inch resolution to 150 for screen resolution. And when you search for things in Google Images and you search with the tool to make them large, that's basically based on screen resolution. You want about three times that in order to have print resolution sizes. So you have to be a little bit more diligent finding images online that work for, for print resolution. What's, what's getting me is I, I don't have a return key, so I'm trying to figure oh, it out. Oh, okay. Let's see. Do you have an enter key? Just tried it. It wouldn't go. Hmm. What do you use when you finish a transformation? Uh, I have to use command alt T for a free transform to start it but then how do you so go ahead and transform something for me so control t and then rotate it and then how do you get it to stick without a an intro <laughs> that works uh, i don't quite know what you mean this stick so crop should work the same way. Oh, I think I'm using the wrong tool. Okay. Yeah, you Thank might you. be using the marquee tool. So the crop tool is underneath the magic wand selection tool or the quick selection tool. Yeah, if a tool ever works in a way that's not predicted by you, let me know.
Uh, often it has to do with the settings on the tool up at the top. But a nice thing about Photopea is each time you open it, it always goes back to default settings. That's something that people get into trouble with with Photoshop is it will always remember the last settings used. And especially for crop, sometimes that can be really limiting because you can actually limit your crop to a certain width and height. So once you've cropped, and then once you've changed your image size to be at least 8 by 10, you can do bigger if you, if you think you have the resolution. And, and if you're doing Photoshop, I would say go ahead and try 350 because that size can crash browser-based programs but work well on professional programs. Once you have that, now we are ready to bring in our references, the images we sketched from. So I just find those. I arrange them all with the tag of orange. And now I want to bring them from the background forward. So number five, that's my sky. I'm going to go ahead and bring that in. And when you bring it in, it's always going to scale within Photop to fit the space. Mine just brought it behind my background, so I need to move it up. Um, so you immediately, and it will come in with a transform box, so you can immediately scale it. The problem is, once I start to do that, like let's say, okay, I want that mountain and I want this much sky. And then I, I hit enter or return. I've already lost a lot off the edges. So what I need to do for compositing is just like if this was a real collage project on my desk, I need space around the image where I can see it. So in order to do that, I'm going to use my move tool and click on the rulers and move guides down to the edges around my sketch. It's okay if your sketch is kind of wonky. Mine certainly is. When you put the guides down, you're setting your edges. Then I'm going to go to image canvas size. And canvas size is different than image size. It's not going to change the pixels of, of what's there. It's just going to add space or take away space to the overall format. And I want to add space. So I'm going to change it to inches. It was 8 by 10, right? Or eight, in my case, 8 by 12. I'm going to change it to be much bigger. I'm going to change it to be a width of 30 inches and a height of 40 inches because mine is portrait format. And I'm going to keep it, my original pixels, centered. And so when I grow it, it will show me everything around it, including what I just brought in. And that way, I can bring it in and kind of keep it off to the side or keep it a little bit bigger than I need. And I know, okay, that's about the right size for what I want. And then I can turn that one off. Now I'm gonna bring in my next reference. Which is seven. I'm gonna bring that in. And because I have a bigger working space now with the canvas size, this actually shows me the image at real resolution. So it goes maybe there, and then I can turn that off. What's in front of that? Four. Bring that on. And that's a very big resolution. So I'm going to hold down Shift and shrink that a little bit. Keep it a little bit bigger than I need it and then place that. So those are all my background elements. Now I'm going to start playing with those. So only the furthest one back, I'm not going to edit really at all yet. I'm not going to cut anything out. But as I get on top of that, now I need to start cutting things out. And I'm going to do a rough cut first, just using my lasso. and just cutting out what I need. 
So I want the sky from the other one. So for this, I don't need very much. 